Hello, scrappers. Well, it's time for another scrap out, tear down, and sort out the bits video. Up on the table today, the autopsy table here, we've got an Ethernet switch. It's by some company I've never dealt with before. It's called uh, Synoptics. It's a Centillion 58000 Ethernet switch. Not familiar with this, never seen one before. Interesting construction. Um, got a lot of daughter boards on it. A lot of connectors. I see gold, lots of gold, so that's a good thing. Um, on the front of it, it looks like we've got 16 uh, RJ45 Ethernet ports here, and then two other ports here. I would imagine go up to a router or something. This one might actually be, I don't know, it's hard to say. This one might be a console port. They're not really very well labeled. I got panel with a whole two panels full of LEDs over here. So there's probably circuit boards behind these uh, diffusers with lots of LEDs on them from the look of it. So um, not much else to see. Until we start tearing it apart. Um, it should be a pretty easy scrap out, pretty quick. Haha, <laughs> I know, famous last words, I say that all the time. It should be pretty quick and the video turns out to be 45 minutes long. But there's really not much to this thing, so we'll see. Hopefully it'll come apart pretty easy. Um, we got some uh, connectors back here on the back. Look like for, I don't know, maybe for a different type of daughter board than what's installed. The plug in there, they've got lots of gold pins in them, and I can tell from the color. You know, after you look at a lot of gold pins and connectors, you can start to tell from the color how heavy the gold plating is on them. And this is heavy gold plating in here because it's a deep, deep golden color. So that's nice. Um, we've got some, uh, we got some connectors over here where this plugged into the rack, and those are going to have gold pins in them. Hopefully they're pressed in. I can't really tell until I get this backing plate off. So I'm going to have to start tearing into this thing and we'll see what we got. Now some of you may recognize this piece of equipment from an earlier video I did. Um, episode 2 of my Where is the Gold Hiding in Electronic Waste series. Uh, this was a prop I used in that when I was talking about connectors. And I said, well, I'm not going to take it apart for this video because it's going to be star of a future video. So here we are. And it's going to have its moment in the spotlight as it gets dismembered. So how does this thing come apart? Let's see here. I see some standoffs here that are holding the main board in. There's another standoff. Standoff. Okay, it looks like there's screws holding the daughter board in daughter boards so let me see if I can get the daughter boards out I don't know what this doohickey over here is it I don't know is it a battery I don't know what it is it's got some screws holding it in so I'm probably gonna need different screwdriver tips those are pretty small screws so let me go get a different screwdriver tip and we'll get this disassembly underway okay now I've got the right tool for the job and the old screw gun See if we get these daughter boards off and get a look at them. Oh yeah. Look at all the chips on that. Holy cow. Lots of flat packs. A few big ones. Uh, some more connectors. Uh, yeah, I can see the gold in there. It's kind of hard to see, but it's there. And I can see the gold in these mating connectors here. And wow, look at all the chips underneath this board. This board has a lot of chips on it. Wow. All right, let me get these other daughter boards off, see if they're the same. They look the same from the bottom. Well, no. That, this one over here is different. Okay. Okay, so these two are the same. I suppose before I depopulate these, I should look them up and see if they resell. Although the whole unit isn't selling for anything. I already checked that out. 
going really cheap on eBay if they're selling at all. But you never know. Every once in a while, the parts are worth more than the whole. You got to check. That's why cars wind up in chop shops. Nobody may want your old Chevy. Eh, but the alternator, the starter, the window motors, they have value. So this was a little different. A little bit different, yeah. Only got one connector on it. But boy, a lot of a lot of big flat packs. You need a lot of gold in these flat packs. These other chips too. This is a rich unit. This has got a lot of, lot of gold-plated connectors, a lot of IC chips in it. Wow, look at that main board. Isn't that something? You zoom in on it a little bit, get a good focus. So, we've got lots of chips here. Big, big flat packs. We've got a big Motorola ceramic chip here. Motorola, it's a 68,000 uh, derivative. There's like a hundred different derivatives of the 68,000. Got some big old MLCCs over here, looks like. Uh, ooh, gold band oscillator, big gold band oscillator, big gold band oscillator here too. Nice, good stuff. Ooh, I hope this is a double-sided board. I'm probably not that lucky, but I really hope this is a double-sided board. We shall see. Get this board off, I'm going to have to uh, take out all these standoffs. Mm. Oh, I'm going to have to go find a uh, nut driver that will fit them. Be right back. Okay, got myself a nut driver that fits. Let's make short work of these. I'm going to get this main board out and see what we can see. Ah! I see they're throwing a few screws in with the standoffs. Tricky, tricky. I'll have to get those screws out too. And that one back there is going to be hard to reach. This is going to take me a bit. I may cut this out or speed it up. Okay, lots of standoffs. All right, now let me take a few other things off here. There's a couple connectors here which seem to go to the uh, front panel LED banks. Take them off. And I don't know what this doohickey is, but it's going to hold the board in too. And it's screwed from the back, so let me take these screws out. Hey, this is aluminum. Hey, for a change, we got some aluminum. Cool, usually these are steel. Uh-oh. There's always one screw. There's always one. Every piece of equipment, there's always one screw that just refuses to come out. What is up with that? So annoying. Do it the hard way. Every once in a while I get a screw that so refuses to come out and gets so stripped, I just have to cut it out. Or take a, uh, a grinding wheel and cut a slot in it so I can get a slotted screwdriver in it and turn it. Sometimes that works. Okay, well, I still have no idea what this doohickey is. Made by, oh! It's a DC-DC converter. 36 to 75 volts in at 5.2 amps, 5 volts out at 30 amps. Wow! Wow, that is a, that is a potent little DC-DC converter. I might actually have use for something like this. Wow, cool! 
nice piece of equipment. All right, so this basically powered the whole board. All right. Let me uh, take out a few more screws, and then we should be able to get this board out. Hopefully not strip any more of them. Let's get one hidden way back here. And any others? They blend in. There's one. It's a busy board. Ah, there's another one. Don't you strip. There we go. Ha! Ah. Oh, it's not double sided. Crap. Well, still, it's a very, very, very nice board. There's a lot of good stuff on this board. A lot of nice flat packs going to have gold in them. Liner lo lo looks like RAM chips going to have gold in them. Uh, oh, some flash RAM down here. That's going to have gold in it. Of course, got a nice ceramic processor. Everything surface mount. Everything on this board will fall right off when I uh, depopulate the board in the kiln, which you know, if you've been watching my videos, if you haven't been watching my videos, then you probably don't know that I, I depopulate my boards. I put them in a kiln, and I raise the temperature up until it's just above the melting point of solder. Shake the boards, all the parts fall right off into a catch basin in the bottom of the kiln. Makes life real easy for depopulating. Then I just sort through them and keep all the good stuff, which in this case, there is a whole lot of good stuff here. There is just oodles of good stuff. It's I love IC chips. I've gotten very good at getting the gold out of IC chips. Got lots of videos on that, making some more too. So this is oh this is quite a load of IC chips all in itself. Let's see what else we got here. Well I'm gonna some things are gonna have to come off before they go in the kiln. I'm gonna take these connectors here off just so that the plastic doesn't melt in the kiln and entomb the gold pins inside. So I will take those off. Yes, they are pressed in. And it looks like we got some funky power connectors over here. Round, big fat round pin power connectors. Or round sockets, anyway. And it looks like they are pressed in too, so I should be able to get those out. Okay, and lots of gold plated connectors, headers jumpers, good stuff. Lots of good stuff. Hey, let me set this board aside for a minute and have a look at the chassis here. Yeah, it's aluminum. For a change, we got aluminum. Usually they're steel. Let me see if I can get these front panel LED arrays out of here. Looks like maybe... be held in with clips which want to reclip every time I pull them out here Oops, gonna wind up bloody if I keep doing that stab myself yeah look at that it's an LED array interesting it's got an IC chip on it Huh, I might have to I might have to look this part up just to see if there's any value to it. I've never seen anything like this before. This is very neat. This is a matrix of LEDs. It looks like 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 by 4. So 60 LEDs and there's another one down here. If I can get it out. Yeah, look at that. All right, so I'll have to look these up. Otherwise, hey, there's 60 LEDs in here, and each LED has a little bit of gold in it. So if it turns out these aren't worth anything, I'll just get the gold out of them. Uh, let's see. I suppose I should keep these connectors. They aren't gold-plated, but... They go with these LED matrices, so 
just in case they have some resale value to them. It's probably a good idea to keep them together. All right, so we got this nice aluminum chassis. It's got some plastic that needs to be stripped off of it. It's got some uh, steel nut certs and some steel springs that need to be stripped off of it and a few more screws. And uh, then we got a nice sheet of aluminum here for the scrapyard. Okay, let's come back to this main board. Um, like I said, I want to get these connectors off the back before it goes in the kiln. Well, the plastic cover came right off that. Let me see if I can get the connector itself out. Looks like it's just pressed in, but pressed in really well. All right, I don't know if that's going to show up. There's a lot of gold plating inside that connector. It's it's heavy. It's heavy. It feels like maybe I don't know a big bronze barrel in there that's been gold plated. And it's got gold plated pins coming down the sides. It's a little discolored. The gold plating's come off from where I pulled it out of the board, but there's a lot of gold plating there. It's very heavy. I wouldn't be surprised if it's bronze that's been gold plated. So that's neat. That's kind of neat. So that's a keeper. Let's see if I can get this other one off. So I've never seen power connectors like these before. They're interesting. Looks like they've got a lot of gold plating on them. Yep. Same thing. So cool. I'll have to watch out for the synoptics stuff. They do things differently, but it's it's good different. Now let me see if I can get these out. Okay, they're only pressed in the board, but they're pressed in really well. Ah, here. Get a look at the ends of some of the gold pins here. I hope that color's showing up on the on the video. And there's some more of them here. Yep, gold pins. Not very big, but there's a lot of them. Let's see if we can get these off. Now, those are going to be going to fight me. Yeah, these are fighting me too. Okay, well, they can fight, but they won't win. I got other tricks up my sleeve. Yep. Get them out a few at a time. A little bit mangled, but they're coming. There we go, there's those. Oh. I'm gonna lose them on the ground. Okay, there's all my gold pins. Plus these in here, plus the power connectors. So, that's not a huge haul of gold pins, but you know, hey, I'll take what I can get. Oh, the airplanes are just going nuts today over me. Now, these have gold deep inside them, and these are pretty small and plated with gold on the ends. Probably the best way to get the gold off of these I found is to use the Eco Gold X Gold Stripper. And I'll put a link to that, how I use that up here in the corner of this video. If anybody knows better ways, let me know. I'm all ears. The Eco Gold X, it works, but it's kind of a pain in the rear to use. 
All right, so let's see. I suppose I should take these batteries off before I put it in the kiln because they will just explode. Won't hurt anything in there, but you know, might as well just harvest them off. All right, so I guess that's pretty much it. I don't think there's anything else I want to take off of any of these boards before they go in the kiln to get depopulated. Well, I take that back. There is one thing I want to take off. I want to take uh, this plate off of here because this, these um, RJ45 jacks will fall right off once the kiln gets up to temperature, but not with this plate on there. The plate will hold them on, they won't fall off. And the plastic internals will just melt and get all gooey. So, take this plate off. Oh, and look, we got more LEDs. They'll fall off. LEDs are nice. I have such a collection of LEDs, I may do a video on uh, just gold recovery from LEDs soon. We'll see. Alright, so, I guess that stuff's all going in the kiln. This... This I may have to keep and play with. This is this is interesting. This is a nice little power unit. It's a nice little DC DC converter. It's got a wide input voltage range, 36 to 75 volts. And outputs 5 volts. 30 amps in this little package. Well no wonder they had it mounted to the aluminum uh, back plate. And probably no wonder the back plate was aluminum because it's a much better heat sink than steel, which is what these are normally mounted on. It's all starting to make sense now. So I think I'm going to keep this, add it to my uh, collection, and uh, it may come in handy someday. Yeah, my collection. I collect way too much stuff, but I'm going to hold on to this. All right, next stop for these boards is the kiln. Okay, the boards are in the kiln. I've got a, a wire rack in there. I kind of hang them on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start up the kiln. It's going to go through a ramp-up cycle. It's going to slowly, over the next hour, ramp up uh, to just above the melting point of solder. And then uh, what I'll do is I'll reach in with a gloved hand and maybe a pair of pliers, shake and bang the boards. Everything should fall down. There's a, there's a catch basin down there in the bottom of the kiln. I don't know if it's showing up. That should catch everything that falls off the boards. And then once the stuff's cooled down, We'll sort it all out and see what we got. So I just gotta close the lid, start it up. Well, here's all the stuff out of the kiln. Uh, the catch, but this is the catch basin that was in the bottom of the kiln. It's collected all the stuff. Um, got the uh, totally depopulated boards over here. They are pretty clean. Everything came off of them. So now I've just got to sort all this stuff out. Um, doesn't look like it's going to be too difficult to sort because it's mostly IC chips and connectors. There's not a whole lot else there. But uh, let me get to sorting and afterwards we'll talk about what we got. Okay, here we go. It's all sorted out. Just about everything that was in the catch basin has been sorted out. There's just some debris left in there. There's some little tiny grain of sand MLCCs and some resistor networks and blobs of solder. Um, here's the depopulated boards over here, and then here's all the stuff sorted out. So, let's see, right up front here, that's that, uh, this actually didn't get depopulated in the kiln. This is that uh, DC-DC converter module I'm keeping because it looks like it's going to be useful. Um, above that, we got a couple piles of IC chips. Um, just for no good reason, I sorted them out into flat packs and dips. I don't know why they're all going the same uh, route uh, when I process them. And boy, some of these flat packs, they must have 200 legs on them. I love that because each leg is going to be a bond wire inside there heading to the die inside. A gold bond wire. And uh, I've gotten quite good over the last couple years at getting the gold bond wires out of IC chips. I've got a lot of videos on YouTube about how I do that. Um, here's a really nice chip. It's the Motorola 68000 series. Let's see, it's a 68 EC040 RC25. Uh, doesn't mean a lot to me. I know it's uh, some iteration of the Motorola 68000 series of uh, CPUs, but 
It's a ceramic chip. It doesn't have gold pins because it was soldered into the board, so I guess you don't need gold pins if you soldered into the board. But it does have um, the gold-plated metal Kovar plate. And um, these older CPUs, ceramic CPUs, have a metal plate soldered over the chip and the bond wires. And usually it's made of Kovar, which is a special ex a metal that expands at the same rate as the uh, ceramic. And usually the Kovar is gold-plated. So that's nice. And you can just hit this with a torch for a few seconds. The solder that's holding it on will melt. The plate will fall off and it will expose all the lovely gold bond wires inside. So I may do that in another video we've got coming up. So got a lot of IC chips here. I mean this board was just packed with IC chips. And when I see piles of IC chips, I see piles of gold in my mind because there's a lot of gold in these chips. Let's see what else we got. We got... Uh, all these uh, Ethernet connectors over here and each one of these has eight gold plated wires in it so there's some gold plating there I've got all these connectors and this one here partly melted and in there you can see all of the gold plating exposed where it melted and peeled back so these have all got a lot of gold plating in them that's nice I'll probably put this stuff through the Eco Goldex gold stripper to get the gold out from inside there where it's really hard to get at this stuff too uh, got a few gold-plated header pins here. Not a lot, but a few. Got uh, two gold band oscillators and one tiny little can crystal oscillator here. Uh, got a really small pile of um, tantalum capacitors. There were not a lot of capacitors on this board. I'm very surprised. Usually these telecom boards are just loaded down with tantalum capacitors and MLCCs. There were not that many of each on this board. A lot of ICs, but not a lot of capacitors. Usually you got a lot of ICs, you got a lot of capacitors, but uh, not this time. In fact, here are the largest MLCCs on the board, and there's only six of them. Now, nice, they are non-magnetic. That's good, because that generally means they have some palladium in them if they're non-magnetic. So I may have to go through all the debris in the catch basin here and find all the little grain of sand MLCCs in there, even though, you know, there aren't really that many of them. I mean, there's one there, there's one there. Oh, they're hard to find. There's a couple right there. And see if they are magnetic or not. So, that'll be a bit of a job. What else do we got here? Well, we got the, uh, we got the LED panels that came off the thing. I can't find any information on these online anywhere, and I have looked pretty diligently. So, I was hoping that they would be valuable, good for resale, or at least give me a pinout or a schematic on them or something so I could figure out how to reuse them for something, but no, I can't find anything. So what I'll probably do is process them with my LEDs. They've got, uh, what is it, like 64 LEDs on them, at least. Plus they've got a little IC chip right back here under this blob, so there'll be some gold in here. Each... Uh, each LED has some gold in it. There'll be some gold bond wires there, so, you know, I'll process with my LEDs. Here's some more LEDs that came off the board. Some banks of LEDs. Green and orange and whatever color. And uh, here's a great big diode that came off the board. So, you know, I did a, uh, a video recently in my Where's the Gold Hiding in uh, E-Waste series on diodes. LEDs and discrete diodes and whatnot. So I'll put, a, I'll put a link to that up here. You can check it out if you like. It's toward the end of the video. Um, here's all of the uh, gold-plated pins that I got off before this stuff went through the, the kiln. Not a lot, but uh, hey, every little bit helps. And then over here, this is just the garbage. This is uh, magnetics, the non-gold-plated headers, the plugs and whatnot, uh, discrete components, stuff that has no real value. I'll just throw that in the trash. So, on the whole, not a bad haul. Uh, I was thinking that module wasn't going to have all that much on it, but boy, there are a lot of good IC chips on there. They're going to get a lot of gold out of these IC chips. I'm sure I will. Plus, I'll get some gold out of all the gold-plated stuff. So, yeah, if you can get one of these modules, cheap or free, better yet, get it. Scrap it out. It's, uh, it's good stuff. 
All right, well, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video interesting, educational, killed a little time during COVID lockdown, whatever. Just give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. And uh, bid subscribe to see future videos. They're always coming. I'm always doing interesting stuff. Interesting to you guys, anyway. To you guys who watch. Um, so, uh, subscribe and press the little bell icon to be notified when the new videos come out. And thanks for watching. Have a good one. Keep it safe out there. Bye.